Willkommen zu Zunkunft am Oizkreuz Berlin, where I'm with Belwich. Uh, guys, first of all, welcome to Berlin. And how is uh, Belwich doing in late 2018? Uh, we're doing well. I think one of us might be hungover today. Um, other than that, I think we're pretty good. Which one? <laughs> That's the mystery. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's talk about the current tour. So you are playing the Mirror Reaper in its entirety on this tour on a special seated, yeah. seated gigs. So uh, where did the idea come from for this? Uh, the idea to play the full song. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I and think the seated gigs and uh, to have sure, a sure. special. Um, well, I think we were we played the first half of it quite extensively. Uh, we were we spent a lot of time on the road doing that with just Jesse and I, and the whole second half has Eric singing on that. So um, we were offered to come over here for a festival, and we thought maybe we can just do more shows around that with the whole song. And I'm not sure exactly where the seeded idea came from. I think it started off as a joke because we were saying we're too old to stand up during a show. And uh, it kind of became real and it wasn't really that funny because we're all too old to stand up for an hour and a half. Well, I'm standing for an hour and a half. I guess everyone else is sitting for an hour and a half. Well, yeah, I'm I'm standing for about 38 minutes, <laughs> but I'm sort of walking around while you guys are doing the first half, you know, sort of pacing the uh, the place. I don't know why I'm and, uh, talking about that. I'm, every gig is actually a seated gig for me, so I'm not really I'm not sure what's so special about this. <laughs> I actually, uh, in all seriousness, I think the seated thing has worked out really well. It's been. Um, it was a lot of it's it's not really the most energetic music in the world and i think that it's it sitting sitting down allows one to maybe approach um listen from a different perspective i don't know sometimes when you stand for an hour and a half and not move you get sore you don't really pay attention to what's going on um yeah so i think i think it allows for a better perspective okay and in a broader sense uh what kind of experience is a good Bellwitch gig. Uh, people have talked about like being felt being felt like they're taken away, you know, and they're kind of going on some sort of a experiential journey, like in these shows. And I think that the seating thing sort of helps with that, and <laughs> the fact that it's the full album and it goes through all these different sort of feels, and it has the second half, which is quite different than the first half. Um, I think it sort of adds to that. So, yeah. Good answer. Thanks. That was much better than my answer. I think also, at least on uh, on this particular tour, we've been really lucky uh, to to play these really incredible venues. Like last night, we played kind of like an old monastery type with these huge arc brick ceilings and vaulted. vaulted. Yeah, we've been playing these. I think the uh, the length of the set and the fact that we had we did ask for them to be seated. Um, I think it worked out about half the, of the shows, but it's really um, allowed some allowed us to play some cool rooms that I don't think we would have normally played um, and it's been and the response has been amazing like it's everyone's been super I guess open to the idea and, and respectful of sort of just watching the show and maybe not talking as much as a normal show um, and I think that I always kind of look at a good Bellwood show as one where during the quiet parts it's quiet yeah. rather than a lot of people just chatting at the bar or like in f the front row thinking it's the bar and uh this this uh tour in particular compared to every other tour we've done since i've been in the band um has been an overwhelming success in that regard uh do you have any plans then to continue this outside uh, europe we did talk about doing it in new york city and in los angeles in the u.s but um I don't think those talks have developed very much. So I think this might be, this might be it. Maybe. Okay, uh, talking a bit more about Mirror Reapers, for those who don't know, it's a 84 minute one song album. 
but I think you guys have been explaining it to people for almost a year now. So let's let's uh, let's ask it this way: Is there anything you know that you can tell me that nobody else knows about that album yet? I don't know. Is there any, any little juicy? There was one thing. Um, it's not really juicy, but um, one thing that was, I thought was cool was um, when they started tracking the ambient part that starts around minute 48, which is where my vocals start soon after that. I was actually doing my vocals live while they were playing their stuff together live. Like I was in a separate room, but I was singing along with them actually tracking it. And that was supposed to be a scratch track, but ended up coming out so good that just kind of kept it. And I added a ton of stuff to that after the fact, but that basic first take is actually performed along with the band, like it's a totally live recording. So I thought that was kind of neat. Maybe has been mentioned before, but I, I can't remember the exact number of computer hard drives we blew up while recording the album, but I think it was pushing three or four. Uh, Billy Anderson had to keep buying, basically he had to buy a new computer and then had to keep buying new hard drives because there were so many tracks and once it started being put together into one whole song the uh computers just kept failing um and pro tools basically couldn't handle it and he had to look up i think he went on some forum and uh found some guy who helped who helped develop pro tools and apparently he was getting error codes that only like have happened once or twice ever It's, it's ironic. Which I thought was pretty cool. <laughs> We like broke Pro Tools. So where the originally the idea came from to just play doom metal with just the bass and drums? When the band started, um, we the drummer Adrian Guerra and I had just uh, stopped a band we were in before that had just broken up, and the guitar player moved out of the city and um he and i had been practicing with just bass and drums when that guitar player couldn't make it to practice and it we started liking it it was like this is this is more fun um i liked it because i was able to do more fun stuff with the bass i could hear it better and uh <clears throat> then i started playing through the guitar player's amp as well as my bass amp I was like oh this is like a whole different another range of um frequencies that i'm not used to hearing And when the guitar player moved, he sold me all of his equipment, and we just... Actually, we, we kind of just stopped playing, and uh, someone asked us to play a show, and I was I said, sorry, we can't. The guitar player quit. And she said, well, why don't you and the drummer just put something together for the show? And uh, Adrian and I were like, let's let's give that a shot. And it it went well, so we kept doing it. Okay, and... Um You already mentioned on these lives, especially uh, you want you know uh, people more to be quiet on the quiet parts and so on. So, um, does a doom metal as a genre hold a special meaning to you? Um, I enjoy doom metal. I wouldn't say it's a particularly special meaning um, beyond that. Do you two have any thoughts on that? Um. I would say that I like all metal, all subgenres of metal. Um, I wouldn't say that doom metal is necessarily more so than other types of metal. Yeah, I think that one of the unique qualities of heavy music in general, not even necessarily metal, but there there aren't many rules. I think that a lot of other genres uh, have a lot of rules on what songs are supposed to look like or what an album's supposed to be like and what choruses are supposed to be like and I think that um, because heavy music doesn't treat vocals as the top priority always I think it allows a lot more um, musical expression and I think there's always uh, bound boundaries to be pushed in heavy music whereas in a lot of other types of music I think those boundaries are a lot harder to push um, Even something like punk, which was the first, you know, big pusher outside of rock and roll, um, punk's been exhausted. I think in a lot of ways, there's not much you can do in punk rock that hasn't been done, and I think that heavy music has a very high ceiling of opportunity um, 
to experiment and I guess I think that's what I look at our album a bit like because we were just trying to push our own personal boundaries from what had come previously and I think uh, Doom as well as Heavy Metal is lucky to be able to do that without much uh, pushback from the public or from metal fans you know and uh, you know after all the hardships uh, with the band uh, how does the future look like for Bellwitch? Um, we we were working on a collaboration record with Eric's band Aerial Ruin um, that we've got a pretty good outline for half of a record done thus far um, we'll probably try to finish that by the next six months hopefully have that recorded um, and then we're going to start working on another record between Jesse and I that Eric will also um, perform on that won't be a collaboration record but just like any other Bellwitch record um, hopefully that'll be done in a year year and a half that could take a while we'll have to see I suppose anything you can tell me already about that one <laughs> uh, we haven't had much time to work on it yet uh, we've been we've been on tour pretty extensively um, we had like two months off straight I think about like June and July, I think we had off, and um, try to catch up on work in that time. There wasn't a lot of time to start writing new material, so nothing, nothing, no, uh, no juicy secrets on that. <laughs> if that's okay, thank you so much, guys, and uh, break a leg tonight. Oh, thank sure, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you, thank you, good, cheers, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you.